<laughs> that was great. Don't try it at home. Don't try That's it at home. No, no I, this is the serial killers who's doing it. Yes. So definitely not. Well, yeah, don't don't try that either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. You guys are not endorsing this, serial killers. We need to make this. This is a pro tip from Matt. Do not yeah. become a serial killer. <laughs> a serial killer. Pro tip. <laughs> Angie and David, thank you for coming on the Uniweb Interview Show, the greatest show on earth, and probably That's what I've heard. and probably the whole universe. Um, it's hot in Mars. It's hot. <laughs> is it is it warming up on Mars where you where you live right now? It is. It is fantastically warm. But uh, I don't. I don't have anything. Do you have anything? The snow melted. So, we have no snow. Yeah. So here's the thing. This is my second time doing a threesome. Um, with, <laughs> and I'm excited again. I, the first time was great. I had a really fun time. Um, people who, and I'm glad it's nice out. And I really want to talk about these amazing books that you two have written. And you, let's not talk about the books. Let's talk about all the other stuff. <laughs> let's talk about everything else besides these amazing award-winning children's book. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, there's a threesome in it. Okay. There's a threesome there's a threesome in the book. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so let's start there. Along comes a wolf. Yes. This is the this is book one of a series, correct? Yes it is. Shepherd's watch and <laughs> wolf in shepherd's clothing. And wolf in shepherd's clothing. Yes. So what what are what are these books about? What is book one about? Let's talk about that. I, I'm interested. Okay, so the whole series is about two teenage boys who chase serial killers. So I always, lately I've been pitching it a lot as it is the Hardy Boys meet Seven. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a that's a hard to, mix right there, bro. <laughs> originally, we used to pitch it as just. Um, the heart, it, this is not your parents' Hardy Boys, uh-huh. but now we kind of like that seven because, uh, right, like in the first one, there's we've gotten a lot of people who say in that first first section of the book it is made them scared of public bathrooms. So that to us is a good thing. Job well Wait. done. So there are people out there that are not afraid of public bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem yeah. with it. <laughs> it's amazing. I've always been terrified of public bathrooms. You know what? what's weird? It, sorry, this is a total tangent, but one time Perfect. when my my uh, my parents took us down to California, my yeah. mother was terrified of me going into a bathroom in San Francisco. Like, she was terrified <laughs> and just worried about it. Do you know, like, I don't think, I don't think, um, like, bathrooms at, like, ballparks and stuff like that are the worst. I mean, they're just, they're just giant troughs for, with urine and, and feces. Are they, do you guys have, like, the horse trough? Yeah. Really? I, I've only seen that once, and I thought that was the weirdest thing in the world. It is the weirdest thing in the world. I don't know who was like, let's just set up a whole giant tub for dudes yeah. to Let's whiz have in. Your <laughs> have you never known? Angie, what are your th- I'm thoughts a girl, on this? I don't pee in a trough. <laughs> just, it's different. We're just dirty, dirty boys peeing in troughs. <laughs> yeah, are Angie, there? How many? Do you not know about this? What the hell kind of question is that? This is the kind of questions. This is the kind of questions we like, ask here. <laughs> I love how in like a minute we just nose that into. You know what? I gotta say, like I've been watching your show. I've watched WB. I watched DC, and it they were like professional level interviews here. Yeah, what's wrong with you? It's, <laughs> it's us. I know it's us. It's not you. It's us. <laughs> I've hardly said anything yet. It's you okay. Don't you don't pee in the trough. Well, because yeah. you ask me how I don't know about these toilets. Look, I love toilets. this though. This is this is what makes great television. People love watching train wrecks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay, 
<laughs> you talk. Okay, Angie. Yes. Let's, I want, I want, okay, so that's what David thinks this book is about. What do you think the book is about? I actually agree with David. That's <laughs> okay. a really great, precise description of what these stories are about. Tell, okay. tell them about who Shepard and Wolf are. How about that? Tell them about oh, who- that's their name, Shepard and Wolf. Yeah. Yes. That's so, why we're so tricky on the titles, right? I like it. Wolf and Shepherd's Clothing. Wink, you are wink, tricky. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. <laughs> we so thought funny. about these things. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right? That's great. It's hot in here, Dave. What is happening? It is really hot in Open here. the window. Sweet <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god, I love this so much. With each other. I actually never realized how much you talk with your hands until there was no space between us. And it's like, I just keep leaning away. I'm going to get slapped backhanded. Okay. Um, hey, yeah, please. Angie, so tell us tell us about this book. So he, he hit it all dead on the head. It's about two, serial, or two boys that are serial killer chasers. Yes. They chase serial killers. Yes. yes. Okay. What, what, did they not want to chase tornadoes, or were they like... We don't have chase... a lot of tornadoes here. So do you have a lot of serial killers in Canada? Yes. <laughs> Apparently we do now. <laughs> so, yeah, so, okay, Angie, where did this where did this idea come from? What's, what's, the, what's the deal? You guys like serial killers? Well, Dave... Je- Dave does... <laughs> I'm going to blame Dave. Dave does like the darker genres, so he okay. wanted to do something that was a little bit scary and i was like cool yeah sounds good and we went off we were gonna actually take a script we had written uh that was a coming of age murder mystery you know 12 year old boys a little bit like stand like me stand stand by me stand by me yeah yeah um but uh we worked on it for a few weeks and we came back to have a meeting and i i think you asked what do you think and i'm like i don't know if i like it dave's like me neither good let's scrap it poof gone three weeks work nobody cares (laughs) hey that's a whole book for me (laughs) <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> oh shit, we should have kept it. <laughs> oh no. Wait, so you don't have it at all? No, we have it. We have the script. Oh, okay. I have it. Yeah. We have I, the have the, I think I have the book still somewhere, like the work you did on it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I don't throw anything away. throw anything away. That's good. good. Okay, so. So then, yeah, so we started talking about different ideas and different stories and what would be interesting, and I'm like, what about something in a high school? So I'm a high school teacher, and, you know, they're sketchy places. <laughs> and I know, the, I know the teenage world, and it's pretty dark sometimes. It is. So, all those hormones. Yeah. All sorts of angst and darkness and weird, oh, yeah, all sorts of things. <laughs> so This we, is why I never let her talk. What? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, like, what did I say now? I'm actually not even swearing. Yeah, you're good. Yes, thanks. Awesome. Anyways, continue. So, yeah, we just started. We decided we wanted a bad guy, where we kind of came up with a bad guy right off the bat, and decided that he would, um, can we tell him what our weapon is? Because then we can leave. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the weapon is a plastic bag. So asphyxiation. Ooh. Pretty dark. Now... What's a fix- asphyxiation? What? What's asphyxiation? And that's when you put like a plastic bag over. For your those head. who don't know, okay. And and then you can't, and then you basically are smothered, <laughs> and then you're smothered, and you die. I shouldn't be laughing. That's not funny. Um, don't don't try it at home. Don't try it that's at home. Just, no, I, this is the serial killers who's doing it. Yes. So definitely not. Well, yeah, don't don't try that either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. You guys are not endorsing this, serial killers. We need to make this, this is a point. pro tip from Matt. Do not yeah. become a serial killer. <laughs> a serial killer. Pro tip. <laughs> Don't do it. It's important to have those. <laughs> hey, that's why they have disclaimers on things. I mean, people eat Tide Pods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's absolutely true. So, yeah. So then we just started playing around with the idea of the bad guy. And then why would he do this thing? And who would he do it to? And who's our good guys, and why would they help? And then the story just started growing. Okay. And then we wanted to write a series of them. Like, it was like a really open-ended kind of plan, right? We figured if we started writing it, it would slowly gather up 
like a snowball a bunch yeah. of other readers, right? If we're on book three, then other people will be like, oh, I got to check out book one and, and come right. along with the ride, right? So we were doing that. And then I think that was the, our plan when we were writing this one. And then we got it out. And just so you know, that this is not, sorry, am I almost hitting you in the face? Again? No big okay. deal. I can take so it. So this was not <laughs> yeah. the original version. We actually had self-published it through Kindle, uh -huh. where I did all the build on the book. This guy right here. And we got her cousin to do the cover. And I'm sure there was other stuff. And so this was the original version of it. Okay. And then I came out of it because I was I, the night before I was going to put it as an ebook online. I I I don't, I don't remember what it was, but there was like a coding error in the ebook, and I had to go into the code and fix it. And it felt yeah. like the the night before you're trying to hand in that big paper in university or college, and it was stressful, and you're you're exhausted, and you're tired, and freaking out because you only have like page one of a 20 page paper yeah that was how i felt and I, so i walked in the room and the computer was open there was a black screen with green letters and i was like holy shit dave you opened the matrix Why did you do that? <laughs> what did you do man <laughs> oh no Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. yeah that was way better there you go well um, so then i did that and I hated it, and we sold it. Like, we put it out there into the world, and then no one... Like, we did our first initial sales of our friends and family, and then no yeah. one else really... Like, it was online, but no one was buying it, right? Did your friends and family buy your book? Yeah. We did wow. pretty good sales. It's nice. Yeah, it was like 150... Must, must be nice to have friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making me feel like an idiot. No. You're welcome. <laughs> Pro tip from Matt: Have Pro friends tip. and family. <laughs> Try to get a family, maybe you dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm the CNN. I'm bringing it off the rails. I apologize. Okay, uh, okay. okay. So, okay. So, so it sucked. It sucked on Amazon, and and it was we were exhausted. We weren't marketing it, and then I did this develop business development course for artists, and I was like, okay, I don't want to ever do the self publishing by myself again. So then that's why we ended up going with a, it, it's called a partnership publisher. Okay. So um, we, we pay for her services of building the book and helping do the edit and, and design. And when we first started out, it was, you know, we barely knew her. We met her over a cup of coffee. She was local. Um, and we liked, she brought her own books to the meeting and showed us what she was she did and everything like that she had a portfolio and she had a portfolio yeah she'd been doing it i think she was at 15 years by that point wow so and i want to oh, say too the cover the cover is fantastic it's it's really nice and clean i, I really one? like the cover yeah yeah so there's a story. The, the first one's okay <laughs> okay but there's a story here okay let's hear it so our design our our partnership publisher designed the cover like she does and mm -hmm. uh, and then she sent us a mock-up, and she said, what do you think? And there was a three-way conversation via some social media platform. And it was pretty cool. It was sharp-looking. We liked it. And then she... But it was like a plastic bag, and that was it. Yeah, it was this crinkled plastic bag with, like, the writing. And so then we get off the phone with her, and Dave... Because it's the murder weapon. And Dave right. was like, what do you really think? And I said, well, it's really sharp, but it's not menacing. And so we kind of left the conversation at that. And so I'm in my house in my sweats, hanging out, thinking about what's menacing in the book. You know, the, the killer is menacing to the girls. The plastic bag is menacing. The, the boys who are chasing the serial killer are menacing to him. So I'm kind of like all these thoughts. And then I'm like, plastic bags. Hmm. So I go under my sink and I pull out a white plastic bag. <laughs> is that? And I put it over my face. And I took a <laughs> selfie. Is that what that is? That's, That's Angie's name. face, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and then but I took a couple of selfies and then I like lift the bag and I'm like, crap, it's the door. I took like three or four pictures of the door because I hadn't reversed the camera. Because <laughs> <laughs> her head's in a bag. Yeah. I couldn't see what I was doing. 
But Amazing. I got it right. <laughs> and then I sent it to Dave. Uh, first, I said, hey, Dave, I did something weird tonight. And I sent him the image, <laughs> followed by, please call mental health. <laughs> like, <That's right>. this, <laughs> yeah. It's not okay. But it, the sad thing was, I was like, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Like, it's totally, yeah. totally normal. All right. Yeah. yeah. Putting a plastic bag over your head. It looks cool. Like, it's it a does. really cool picture. It looks it professionally is. done, too. <laughs> and it's just off of an iPhone, too. Professional bag lady. That's, yeah. uh... Yeah. But the other, two, <laughs> the other two are stock photos, so... But still designed by our, our lovely publisher. Yeah. So. yeah. I want to ask this. How, how do you guys go about writing a book together? Because I, I brought this up before I started recording... And yeah. I hate when people touch anything I do and with my writing. How do you guys coexist in this? Do you have certain aspects that you write? Or do you, like, how, how does that work? Do you say, like, you write these characters, I'll write these characters? Like, you write the end, I write the beginning, let's meet in the middle? Like, uh, you I, want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so <laughs> this is, do you want to start? Okay. Uh, that's actually funny because I usually start. Um, I think we did a lot of practice script writing before we actually wrote novels. Okay. So we got really good at getting the tone and voice of people, of characters in a story. So then uh -huh. when it was time to write a book, which is really just like four scripts in a row, like that many pages or words, um, yeah. we basically get a really solid outline. Like, okay. like every beat is filled in. And then... <laughs> and then we <laughs> I'm laughing about the jungle metaphor, but okay. I'll get there eventually. Um, anyways, I always begin and I just start writing and I've got the outline that we have agreed on. And if we're going to do get out at any point, it's going to be during the outline. If you're going to do get out? Duke it out. Like, oh, duke it out. Okay. Yeah. Like have, gotcha. like have a fight about a concept, an idea or a character or what happens to them. It'll happen during the outline. Okay. And then usually, usually you still have a well, yeah, fight. but that's okay. I mean, the main, the main stuff. And then I write until about the halfway point, uh -huh. and Dave comes in behind me and he starts like checking my writing and my the the what I've added and haven't added and how far off the path I've gotten, adding stuff. And he starts cutting and changing, and it's all good. Like I actually do not have a problem with it. The only time I actually got stressed out was there was a thing on our. On our on word was it on Word? Where I think I, we did on Word, yeah. Where, on Microsoft Word, where we could I could see every change, and that stressed me out. It doesn't. I don't care if he's like because the ultimate goal is to write a really good story. Yeah. So, okay, he didn't like that part. That's okay. And credit to Dave, he never throws anything actually away. It's never gone. He has like a special yeah. bin. He stores all the things I've said, and he has this really great way of like putting them in other parts of the book. Yeah. So that's cool. So then I go to halfway, and then nice. by the halfway part, I'm like done. And he jumps over me, and he finishes the second half of the book. And I go behind him and read what he's written and make my comments and changes. And then we do a couple more passes after that. We do a lot of passes yeah. after that. So that's cool. kind of how we write. Sometimes we dig our heels in about ideas. Like there was a scene in Along Comes a Wolf where Tony Shepard, who's our cool all-star kid... Um, he's at a party and he's like trying to like get a girl and we, and it's funny cause I'm a girl and Dave's a guy. And so I thought it should be, what? I, I know, know. <laughs> I was shocked too. So I was like, I don't, don't see like gender. And, I don't see gender. <laughs> <laughs> don't, it's fluid. Gender it's fluid. fluid. That's right. Um, so we actually on that particular thing disagreed on how he would pick up the girl because Dave wanted it to happen his way and I'm a girl, I wanted it to happen my way. So there's been times, right? That's we, a, well, how did, uh, how do you, how do you pick up a girl? I would love to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Dave knows either. Yeah. Uh, David, yes, okay, uh, David, what was I'll your, find what was it, your, I'll find it here. Which method did you go with? Which method did you go it with? It was both. So you uh, well, used we both. Went with, we went with Dave's idea, however, and it, changed added something to that scene because he was like no i think it should really be like this and he said but what if this happens at the end and i'm like i think I'm sold i think the trouble the can trouble i guess what angels, dave can i guess what always, dave did it was too cheesy was angels i think in my mind yeah can i but guess what made, david was you made him look like a player yeah he wasn't a player but we had to pull it back that's all yeah, yeah that's I what i 
so Dave, you had a you had a really cool pickup line, I'm sure, and he was doing something really neat, or something something that was like. I'm a Look st- at me! I'm not the player in any way. I know, but uh, but it doesn't mean you can't write that. And Angie, yeah. you probably had him doing something real sweet and nice, and like <laughs> yes. bring you home to your mom kind of deal. Here's a flower. Yeah, yeah here's. It was, it was like it was like, like I really I I really the, it was blowing the eyelash or you something. You did. Like, you did that. I did the eyelash. You did the eyelash. Oh man. That's embarrassing. The yours was super cheesy. Let's cut this it? interview. I'm out of here. <laughs> well, Wait, so the like... so the pick so there was a pickup line and there was some cheese thrown in as well. Yeah, it was yeah. a balance. It was a balance. What was yeah. the what was the pickup line? I don't remember. Do you remember? No. That's like two three years ago, man. <laughs> we don't read the books we write. We just never. <laughs> oh, if you quizzed us on the stuff. We I think I epically I fail. I it's funny because I I right now I'm working on book four on my section, and I will constantly be like, okay, what did we actually say in that book at that point? Go back, reference our own writing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can imagine because, well, going through so many drafts too, right? Like having to revise so many times. You're like, yeah. wait, which one did we go with? <laughs> like, yeah. I can imagine yeah. that's a, a nightmare. It is. And our, our partnership publisher, who's also our editor, is amazing. Because at one point she sent us a note and said, hey, you spelled this character's name differently in two two parts. In two different books. In two different books. We're like, oh, shit. So <laughs> you're like, dang, Damn. we have to change that. So yeah, it's a lot of intel, like like so much information. And yeah, I remember I, like, early on, we started in, on book three, we ended up getting, like, one of those timeline softwares where you could input when things happen, because it got so many different dates going on, like, when people met, and I think we're covering about 20 years of a, of a timeline, and oh, just wow. remembering when all those things happened, and then, you know, is say the age of one character does that work with the parents when they met and yeah or was like mom 12 years old you know yeah so let me ask you this character development is important in in writing with the serial killer he starts off using a plastic bag does he develop into paper bags or (laughs) (laughs) that was stupid it's a very stupid joke but (laughs) He moved into cloth bags because they're yeah, he's, got to- <laughs> he's using topes. <laughs> <laughs> they won't die. I can't. <laughs> Damn breathable material. <laughs> oh, he's God. saving the planet, but he's trying to murder the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tagline. That is a great tagline. you got to write that story. Get on it. And not saving the planet. Interviews. Saving the planet, but trying to murder the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a great T-shirt idea. <laughs> somebody, somebody on Twitter is going to be like, "Oh, I've got an idea." <laughs> uh, that's the thing, man. There's so many ideas. It's all about execution, brother. It's all it about is. Execution. It is like I teach script writing, and I'm always right from the very beginning. I'm always like, you know what? No one cares about stealing your ideas or anything like that, because everyone could write the exact same like pitch idea and all come out with different ideas. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it is because I, I wrote. That. I, I was writing. Uh, I write a blog every morning, and I was telling my girlfriend this earlier. I was like, I don't understand why people like this blog. It's like I'm not writing anything. Like I feel like everyone could write that. <laughs> They're just words. Yeah, <laughs> like it's nothing. To me, it's nothing special. She's like, yeah, but that's just because it's normal for you, and it, it, it's hard to understand. I think that it is so much about the execution of the idea. Like I don't worry about anybody stealing my material because. I don't think people can write with the same voice that I write with. And I'm sure you guys feel the same way about what you're writing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And have you ever had those moments, though, when you read somebody who kind of comes close to your voice and you're like, oh, no. No. Nope. Never? I have. When I read, uh, when I read I Stephen King's on writing, when I read Stephen King's on writing, I was like, I'm just like Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You're just a younger. <laughs> Yeah, a little younger. I, yeah, I like to compare myself to the greatest of all times. Like, I got Shakespeare on my wall and, like, J.K. Rowling. I'm like, I'm chasing you guys. <laughs> I'm on you. <ya. laughs> I'm William's on your like, tail. Oh, no. 
<laughs> well, I have the list of like most books sold all time, and yeah. I have thirteen all time bestsellers, and Shakespeare's at the top with four point five billion, and I've written my name at the very bottom. I've got like I haven't updated in a while. It's got eighteen. <laughs> 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 That was like two months ago, though, guys. Okay. Yeah, like what? Probably twenty now, right? Twenty at least. Are yeah. You me? <laughs> we all have to dream. <laughs> Absolutely. But I want to talk about you guys are accomplished writers, though. I mean, you've won awards. You won a a, a, a children's book award <laughs> for this amazing serial killer book. Yeah. We Is have. this? Is this can is this Canada's uh, favorite bedtime story to read to children? I huh? wish it was. I wish it was too. Yeah. So let's talk about it. it's what is it called? It's the Moonbeam Children's Book Awards and the Saskatchewan Book Award. You all have yeah. won. We won the Saskatchewan First Book Award on Along Comes a Wolf. Okay. And then we won a gold in the Moonbeam Awards, which is down in the states. It's in, the, it's in Michigan, actually. The Moonbeam Awards okay. is American. Okay. So that made us internationally award winning. And then we also were nominated for the High Plains Book Award, which it happens in Montana. And we actually went down and visited Montana, but we were only a finalist. We didn't win that one. Not only. It was pretty awesome. It was amazing. It was a, it was <laughs> a great thing. It was. And then, and then we also won a silver on Shepherd's Watch. I like to plug my product all the time. And, do so. and then we're nominated for a young adult book award on this one at the SAS Book Awards this year in like a month. In a month, yeah. So by the time this airs, it's probably going to be like two weeks or a week or maybe we've already won it. We just don't know. We just don't know. Let's pretend like you won. You yeah! just won the Saskatchewan Book Award. Yeah. yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Trash the camera and just <laughs> over. Punching people in the face. <laughs> or did it? Me, I'll get hit in the face. That was yeah, scary. No <laughs> slow that right down. You know what that looked like? But honestly, when when we slow won mo. the first, I'll, I'll do it in slow mo. Yeah, when we won the first one, it was more of just like a okay, and then we kind of like got up and then did the high five. No, actually, you were more energetic than me. I always downplay it. It was like, oh, people don't hate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay, people don't think it's ridiculous. I went out that yeah. day and I got, I was just trying to distract myself because I was pretty nervous about the book awards because they were our first accolade and it was like a big, it was, kind, it was a big deal. Yeah. So I, I go to the little farmer's market. It's like a little craft sale. And I bought, I saw a keychain that said winner. And I was like, is that too like presumptuous of me? And I asked my friend, she's like, no, I do it. You're going to win. I'm like, cool. But just in case I got believe. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. so then when they call our name, I put the keychain in front of Dave. Winner. Yeah. I, I would have went and got it. Some people go out and get tattoos. So at least you didn't do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no. World's no. best writer tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't I, It was a super cool moment for me. And I was actually pretty, like, mentally worked up before I got there. Yeah, I remember I, it took me, like, I, I was, I remember going up and doing our acceptance speech, but it, it kind of, I got, like, verklempt, 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 I said that word in the, in the speech. Yeah, and I was like, why did I just say that? I have no well, I basis for that. I think it's like, I mean, for writers, and you guys, I don't know if you all have heard this before, but, like, we're egomaniacs with an inferiority complex, it's... Um, <laughs> not all of us, I guess, but I know I am <laughs> like, and because I believe that I, when I'm writing it, I'm like, this is the greatest thing that's ever been written in the history of mankind. <laughs> this, this is going to go down in the annals of history. <laughs> History's butthole. We'll never know. <laughs> you know, and it's like the most exciting thing, but in re like, as soon as I put it out there, I'm like, don't read it. Don't read it. <laughs> because yeah, that'll smash. That'll smash my dream completely. <laughs> but then when you then you get good feedback and you're like, I am the best in the world. <laughs> it's I it's a really the, cool I thing. You, I knew yeah. exactly who I was. I told you, mom. I'm <laughs> in your face. You never believed in me. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> That's great, though. So <laughs> it's great that you guys have won these awards. In so, was there like a cash prize involved? Yeah. Yeah. There was, but we didn't. We didn't actually know. I didn't know about it. Did you know about it? I don't. I don't remember. So we get the envelope. Like it's a. It was my boyfriend calls them the book Oscars. Okay. Which is super cute. So we go. We go down there and we get called. You know the nominees are, and they list the three books, and the winner is, and they called us. So we get up. We go up there. We give our thank you speech. We come back. They take some photo ops in this like archway place. Right, with it, was pictures. A, it was an archway of books. It was cool. And then we nice. sat down, and it was what the moment of, like, holy shit, this just happened. This is amazing. And then Dave opens the envelope they gave us, and there's, like, the certificate, and there's a few other things, and then there's a check. There's a check. And we both look at each other and go, oh, my God, there's a check. And the publisher and her husband, he looks at his at our publisher, the her husband, and he says, didn't they know they were getting any money? <laughs> she goes, doesn't look like it. So that was awesome. That's a great surprise. It was. It was. Great, yes, it was. Yeah. Well, see, I've asked this question a couple times on Twitter, and I, I've, I've always wanted to know, like, from people who've actually won a, a book award, um, like, would you rather be an award-winning author, or would you rather be a best-selling author? We got the awards now, honey. Let's do best-selling. <laughs> <laughs> Why settle for one? <laughs> yeah. I, I would pick... I would, I'd pick best selling. Yeah. Um, I like the awards and and everything like that. I just you don't know you think it's strange it doesn't match stories up stories out there, right? Yeah. Don't you think it's strange it doesn't match up though? Like you would think the books that win these amazing awards would also be best sellers. Like they're because they're being held up against the competition of other books. Like what's the deal? <laughs> Why aren't they Don't they don't they get I, like for anything, don't they get a bump though when they are award winning? I would assume, like knowing that your book is an award winning book, I'm definitely going to read it now. Before, if if it wasn't, I'm just kidding. It does, but it does. <laughs> it does definitely give a bit of credibility. Like it's absolutely nice to, be able to say, hey, by the way, we are an internationally award winning series. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, because peer like peer reviewed like against other books, either in its genre or just like fiction books, it's the best out of the best. Why wouldn't you want to read that over? I mean, because it's basically like having a thousand good five star reviews or whatever. Like it's yeah. it's like a, the best review you can get. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's and, why I buy books as reviews. Yeah, well, for me, it's always what other people are saying, like. When right. I'm on Twitter and people are talking about a certain book, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll check it out sort of thing, right? I think, yeah. too, though, when you, you give your work to family and friends, they don't want to hurt your feelings and tell you it's shitty. They all they all tell you they love it and it's really good. And you're like, Some hey, people's hey. family. <laughs> <laughs> but when the industry says that you've got a good product, then you're like, oh, phew, okay, good. We got, you know, we're like doing something right. Not that yeah. we don't give our, you know, friends and family credit. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, whoa. But they care about us and our feelings. Yeah, right? it's hard for yeah, it's hard for loved ones to like you know, give you, give you any kind of criticism because they're just proud you're not like you know on the streets or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You're> precisely. <laughs> yes. Like I never thought you, you used to eat your boogers and like <laughs> like I've never thought you'd have written a book. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's not made of boogers. Awesome. <laughs> It's amazing. And so is this something you all have to enter the, the book award, the, the competition? Do you enter it yourself or is it nominated by fans or, or how does that we, work? Everything I think you have to enter into. But one okay. of the things, one of those great things of moving over to our partnership publisher was she was the one who was like, oh, by the way, this awards is, these awards are coming up. Do you want us to enter these books? What categories? And then she'll do all the work for us. And just send us the bill on it, and it's like, yeah, thank you very much, right? So yeah, um, it's, it's huge. It having having that support is fantastic. So yeah. Well, and really, because I'm not writing is three years new to me. So when we got shortlisted on Along Comes a Wolf, and the the TV guy was interviewing me, and he goes, "So what do you think did, about the book awards?" And I said, "I didn't even know about them until today." <laughs> <laughs> like, <that> was, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, and he's like, back to you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. In the weather. Great. This is why I do my job. Uh, back to you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't know about them. And so the publisher was able to like push us towards some of this stuff yeah. that I, w- I didn't know. How would I know about this? Yeah. I'm not part of that world or wasn't. Um, no. well, how do you like being in the the writing world? You're so you're like you said you're a high school teacher. You teach art and English, um, so you're obviously a creative mind. How do you like transplanting from teaching young minds to not be so dumb to <laughs> what you're doing now? Not dumb, uninformed. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I have two I have, teenagers. You do have two teenagers. <laughs> um, well, because I, I, because I write about teenagers, I think it's actually on me to be. I think I wouldn't have done a good job if the kids are like, that wasn't very good, Miss C. You didn't do a good job on that, or we don't talk like that. But the kids who read it like it. Oh, so. Wow. Which is, I mean, I had a kid. He, I have silent reading for a few minutes every day in my class. And this kid comes over and he says, "I don't have a book." I'm like, here, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like, here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, read this. It's by some unknown authors. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who they are. Why, is your, why is your picture in the back? I don't get I it. I don't know how that ended up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he quietly read it and didn't say too much. And then he comes when he was done after a couple of weeks, he came over to my desk and he said, um, can, I have the, can I have the next book? Like quietly, like he didn't want his Aww. friends to know that he like enjoyed it. And I'm like, sure. So he takes it, and then he comes back at the end of the week on Friday, and he's like, can I take this home for the weekend? And Aww. I'm thinking, I, like, to me, that was, like, the biggest stroke. It was like, yes. And then I'm like, can you give me 20 bucks? I'm kidding. Just take the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Top it up. <laughs> you think I'm made of money? I'm a teacher. Give me the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So, That's the uh, coolest you're thing. You're fleecing students in the hallway. <laughs> Buy my book. 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you got a little fold-out <laughs> table set up. But so that I think to me is a huge accolade, like outside of the awards, if a teenager reads it and believes it and doesn't want to go to the bathroom anymore, no, (laughs) then they're not asking for potty breaks. My job gets easier. Nobody's ready. You scared them out of the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's amazing. But it's, the worlds are very different, like the teaching world and then the, the other world. They're very different. Yeah. They're. The other world is very nice. There's a, we had, I had a very, one weekend I had an intern from the university work with me and we went to a seminar on how to work together. And the next weekend, Dave and I got workshopped. One of our scripts got workshopped by a movie channel. Yeah. And so when I was at the seminar with the, the kind of teacher to be, we're, you know, there for the whole day and it's like, here's some crappy sandwiches and some like noodle soup and there's hot water, but no tea bags. Like it was garbage, right? It was like for poor people. The next weekend we're with the movie industry <laughs> yes. and it's like, it's like, here's your beautiful spread for breakfast and we bring you carbonated water with lemons. Oh yeah. They give us like eggs and yeah. Every hour we yeah. had a different, beautiful buffet of something exquisite and it was like, holy crap, man. The other side lives really well. <laughs> yeah. And even just... <laughs> Like I teach and not, I'm not, I think I'm a good teacher and I, and, but they're still teenagers. You're not going to have everyone engaged, but when Dave and I do speaking arrange, you know, engagements, everyone's paying attention and everyone's asking questions and yeah. then they have like beautiful snacks again. I'm all about the snacks and, <laughs> and, and beverages and it's. Actually, writers are really interested in the snacks because the two other authors that we are in competition with for this book awards I've yeah. been going back and forth with them on Twitter, and all that they talk about is the food. <laughs> like, who can eat the food fastest? That's the competition. You guys are having eating competitions during yeah. the book competition? That's all <laughs> they care about. So. so, yeah. So, they're very different worlds. They're very different worlds. They're both very nece- necessary as well, because, I mean, teachers don't get nearly as much credit as they deserve. I know <laughs> when I was in going going to school, I was an absolute... <laughs> horrible horrible student like i don't know how i got into college i was terrible to i was terrible to the teachers i apologize they were just for, trying to get rid of you move you on they were man like i don't know how the hell i got i like i got a i got a academic scholarship but i played football so i mean oh okay that's what it was <laughs> it's 
But I, I mean, seriously, because kids, are, I mean, that age is it's very difficult because there's so many different things going on. And we were talking about this before, David. But like, you see the you see the kid or the person, and you just think, oh, that's who they are. But the stuff behind the scenes that nobody has any privy to, it's just like if you knew what the kid was going through. Like, yeah. it, and it's not, it's like the teacher doesn't have that av- availability to find that out and the resources to, to help these kids that are dealing with these things. It's like teachers are godsends or good teachers are godsends because they can really change a kid's life. Like my eighth grade teacher gave me Harry Potter. Um, I had to that point, I hated reading. I was, I didn't want to read. I hated books. I didn't want to study. She was like, just try this book. I read it, and it was like I took it home with me, and I didn't want to put it down. I came back two days later, and she was like, you didn't read this. And I was like, yeah, I did. Can I have the next one? So she made me take it. She made me take a test online <laughs> to see that I, if I read the book. And and I read the That's next one. That's what you need to do with your students, by yeah. the way. <laughs> you should, yeah. Maybe come up with a, a questionnaire for your books. But it was It was that teacher that, like, because I was always bored, I was always sleeping in class or not doing what I was not paying attention that was like gave me the love of reading. And without that, like if it wasn't if it wasn't for that teacher giving me Harry Potter, like I don't think I would have the love for reading and writing and doing this stuff that I do now. It's like it literally changed the trajectory of my life. And so do that. Don't don't screw around. <laughs> I'm just kidding. None of this writing. I'm just like I'm done. <laughs> yeah. But but it's I like that. Like I like the idea that stories can do that. They can have that hold on on people. young yeah. young people, right? And I'm not trying to like toot our own horn, but no, this is what this whole interview is about. Had, we've had a we've been told we're really good for like the reluctant reader for the kid who doesn't want to read. And we've yeah. had a couple of kids that have been like, yeah, I'm not interested in that at all. And then read the book and love it. And oh. we didn't like, it wasn't intentional, but the things that we did intentionally for the way we built our book, it seems to have paid off for yeah, us. So, for sure. Yeah. Cause yeah, exactly. we have short chapters like one to three pages. Um, nice. uh, the language is at a certain level. And... Well, and it's, uh, there's a lot of action, right? So there's... Yeah. It, it feels like almost every three pages, there's like a cl- another cliffhanger. So then yeah. you just got to keep turning the page. No, okay. That's, that's got to be difficult to write, though, I feel like, because I remember writing similar style, because that's how I love to read, because I have that same kind of attention span where, like, I have to be engaged. It's not that I don't like reading. It's just like I need to be engaged when I'm reading. Um, but when I was writing it, I was like, okay, take it easy, Matt. Like, <laughs> like pump the brakes. <laughs> I felt like I was going to wear out the reader. Like, do you feel like you're, when you're writing that way, you're just going to like, no, you don't feel it. You're just no, like, we're yeah. like Come on. here we go. <laughs> but, but even then, like a part of it, first of all, the, the short chapters are always because we wrote scripts and we took what we learned from script writing and applied it to book writing, right? Yeah. Short, tight scenes, keep moving along. Um, but we also define our shape of our story early on, right? And I'm like, I'm, I'm a little obsessive about outlining and making sure that the story is down so that we know what we're going. Because when you're on a journey together, right, you want to know that, we're both going to the same place, you know, we're both heading to San Francisco together. We don't want to end up in Florida by the end of it. Right. Right, So, so we, we really know what we're doing, but it's not even just the big goal. We have the little goal. So we always know where we're going each step of the way. But in between those, I, and I'm always about like lean and mean and strip down. And then whenever Ange writes, she likes to wander in the daisies and, and check things out. And, it's oh, true. there's something shiny over there. I'm going to go check it out. And so when I come into it, I'm like, okay, this is way too much wandering. But I can take this and shape it into something. Like even today, I'm working on book four. And she has the characters doing this long trip. 
And I'm like, okay, well, that's great, but it doesn't really move us forward. But I'll take this little section and it shows us this little moment of this character reflecting on his life and the situation he's in and everything like that. And he gives those character moments. And yeah. then, but we, he's, he's always like, okay, I got to get back to the finding the dead body or finding the serial killer or whatever it is. So, right. But you're able to give the character more depth with those. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's actually, that's the thing that I've fallen in love with, with our stories. Cause when I, I started into this, I'm like, yeah, we know how to write the story. Let's do that. And then as our characters have interacted I just, I like the moments when, because the two boys in the series were from different worlds, right? Um, Tony is like the basketball star, uh, happy, good family. Um, uh, It's uh, his mom's Jamaican and his dad is like Canadian. And and then Charlie Wolf, sorry, I'm not trying to hit you in the face. Charlie is like, um, we we don't know a lot about him, and that's a part of the journey of the story. But you know, he's he's a smart ass troublemaker. He can break into uh, uh, he schools. likes he likes breaking houses. into schools and houses and stuff like that. He likes skirting the law as much as he doesn't can. really attend classes very much. But, and know. then as soon as we start getting them together, and then mixing those worlds as we progress through the story, like putting Charlie into Tony's world, it's, it's just, it's magical. It's so much fun because you want to see what Charlie's going to do in this situation or put Tony into a bad situation, which is kind of the way the first book was. It was yeah. always uh, just like, take, how do you take a straight laced good teenager who's not going to break the law and make him start having to break the law to try and do good things in the world. Yeah. So those moral decisions. Yeah. You have to bring them. And it's funny because, uh, I remember well, we do book signings and things and this woman had walked by and we said, Hey, do you like murder mysteries? Uh, and she's like, what are these about? And Dave said, it's two teenage boys who chase (laughs) serial killers. And she's like, serial killers. She was really kind of disgusted and not okay. Like she was actually a bit rude. Yeah, yeah. She was, yeah. And so I was. Well, maybe she was a serial killer, and she was like, "They're on to me. <laughs> They're on to me." <laughs> and so we kind of thought we talked about that when we drove home because it was in a different town, and I ended up writing a blog post about it because I actually knew a kid. He's graduated now, but um. Unfortunately, in a store in our city, there was a gang initiation. Like a mall. In a mall. And so this yeah. kid, um, just some random kid, had to walk in and, and stab somebody. Oh, so my student was in the mall, and he sees this, and he, like, where everyone was running away, he, like, full on, like, he body tackled him. He ended up getting stabbed in the side. But he did Holy it to crap. save everybody. He didn't even hesitate. So, you know, it's kind of like that moment when, you know, something terrible happens. Instead of, like, running away, like with a Boston bombing at the marathon, yeah, right? There's people course, running to help. There's one bad person, but everyone else is running to help. And and I thought about this kid, and I referenced him in that blog post, because I thought, yeah, okay, serial killers aren't cool, for sure. No. <laughs> like, they're, <laughs> they're terrible. But yeah. I'd like to believe that in the world of all the crazy, there's, there's more good than bad, and that there's good people like this boy that I know personally who is willing to like tackle yeah. this idiot, right? Who's who knows yeah. what he's been through to have to be initiated into a gang, you know, like that's right. another story. But I was like, screw you old lady. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? This is She's good. just mad. Cause her kid's a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, for me, and this is one of the things that I always believe in is that, I, you know, the whole, you know, what's more important, uh, plot versus character or whatever, right? Right. And I hate that because they're the exact same thing in my mind. Um, the the actions that our characters take uh, define our characters, but those actions are also the things that move the story forward, right? And right. that's the same way in life, right? The actions that we take, everything like yeah. that, and the choices that we make. So that's, to me, the one of the best parts and i I agree with Ange. like i always like going into the world of tony and charlie because i always 
know that these guys are willing to do the tough things to try and do the right thing in this world. And th- so you, and I just want to make sure I got this clear. You guys both write for Tony and Charlie, like you both write scenes and, and voice and dialogue for, for them. Is that uh, right? Well, we write, so it's first person from t- Tony's point of view. Uh-huh. Um, but we both write Tony's words. Like yeah. you'll write is you okay? And you feel and there's like not a deviation in, in tone and voice because that's that's one of the things I feel like would be the biggest concern when you have a, a partner a duo writing is like that deviation between you can obviously tell when this person's because you have to like get into the character you have to know I feel like you have to know the character inside and out but obviously you guys have mastered who this character is right. I mean, you have like a full bio written out of who the character is. No, no. I think the big thing for us was, was and started writing the first one. And I, re- I just got into the words and listening to it and everything like that. And I always find I use that as my way to get into that headspace. And I will, I do adjustments, right? It's not just that thing. I will make changes in actions and, and stuff like that. And, it's always this meeting meeting process, right? Ange has this version. And I, I'm going to say this right away, is that Ange has in her head a version of who these two teenage boys are because they're they're kind of coming from a place of somebody's, some people she knows. Well, yeah. When I picture yeah. Tony and Charlie, <laughs> I taught them about 20 years ago. I know who these boys are, uh-huh. right? And I will never, yeah. ever, I will take it to my grave, I will never say who they are. But I've never met these wow. kids. I've never seen photos That's of cool. them. So my version of Tony and Charlie is not her version. But somewhere in the process of telling the story, we've kind of merged yeah. Yeah. at this meeting place. And then that's where we write from. And well, and that's where a lot of those like discussions are. Is, is this the kind of character who does choice A or the right. kind of character who choice, does choice B? And, but yeah, I'm going to, I just want to, because we're talking about this, I don't believe in, in doing like character bios because I think it's busy work um, and it allows us to kind of like build it and grow it as we make the choices, right? That, yeah, um, it's more organic growth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like we know what these boys are about and where they're coming from. So how do we do that? And I, I, her and I both will do moments where it's like, oh yeah, our character did did this. I remember in book one, um, we had the scene planned, everything like that, and then uh, the I wrote the scene behind Ange, like she had written the scene, and I came behind her, and I'm like, yeah, just so you know, I had Charlie acknowledge that he knows who Tony is before they actually knew each other, and Ange was like, what? And but she responded really well to it, right? And so then that becomes a part of that character in that moment, yeah. right? Charlie knew who Tony was beforehand, and then but then also that builds like well, how did he know everything like that? So then we flesh that out in book two. We had because we always do it's usually first person point of view, except we'll do like it every couple of like every section of the book. We'll have yeah. one scene from the ca- the killer's point of view, right? Okay. So we we were doing that. We added um, in this character. We wrote her in, and it was only we wrote the character in because we needed uh, a thing to ha- to like we needed to flesh out this. We one. needed we needed something to happen. We needed, we needed a, a catalyst for uh, something to go on. Yeah. 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 And now that character has grown into a main part of the whole series. Like we have, we have this big open story question now, and it's like, oh, now we got to fill that story question. And we're we're we've figured it out finally. But yeah, it's it's much more organic. Like we have the plan, but we're open to changes, right? So yeah, that, that's the fun part of writing when you allow your characters to literally just develop and grow themselves as opposed to like having this hard format for them i think that's that's i think that's where the magic of writing comes in you know and where it becomes where it really comes to life 
as well, opposed to just being a story. And I think too, just as human beings, right? Like, you know, you're, you're doing something, you're living your life and then something happens and, and you like the girl comes over and you say something in your head, you're like, shit, I shouldn't have said that, but I did. And now it's out there. And that's yeah. like, we live in an organic way. Why wouldn't we try and create that in the story too, rather than right. pre like imposing this on, on, a, on this character. Right. Yeah. Cause how much predestination of what we do is super planned out and how much of it is like the holy shit moments that just kind of happen yeah but so it's, it's funny because it's like you're, like you're honestly writing like free will <laughs> it's like you're, <laughs> you're giving it's like you're giving your autonomous characters free will inside of a book that you're writing that you have free will to write and it's like who the fuck is writing this story anymore <laughs> what is going on here at some point you know what i mean it's like you're in a dream within a dream within a dream yeah and, it's, and somehow you got a book out of it <laughs> somehow well somehow. and and i really yeah i lost my train of thought never mind <laughs> moving along that's, okay. that's all right no i um so i, I want to let everybody know all the links to your books are going to be in the description of this video um you you have a blog angie as well no, no we don't that was we are done with the blog dave's like no more blogging no is it okay just go to our website so just okay uh, www.cuniosandgain.com Um I was gonna. Say, I can't remember either. No, no, no worries. Uh, so we have we have a Cunios and Gain Twitter account. We have an Instagram account. Facebook. I saw that, and the, the Twitter account's called Dick and something else. <laughs> What's it? <called? laughs> what? <laughs> I saw the I saw the I saw the Twitter account and I thought this okay, is no, no, interesting. No. So there's the Cunyas and Gain account. You made him blush. I think I don't even know what you're talking about though. So you know what I'm talking about, Angie? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. making this. Okay, so there's the Cunyas and Gain account, but there was this at the start of this year. I totally decided to just kind of embrace my own Twitter account yeah. and. It's it's where I'm most active. So if you want to get a hold of us, you can go to the Cunhas and Game. But uh, the the person who's the most active is me on Twitter. On Twitter, and then she's active on Instagram and Facebook. And then okay. we like everything, we mash it all together. So and all I that's available on the website. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what I'm talking about? No. Do you? I, yeah. I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> Can I pull it up? I want to. I saw it because I I saw it the other day, and I was like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> it's our new series. It's an adult only series. Seriously, I thought it was. Something. I was like, "Is this is this like hashtag Trey Gang?" Uh, I'm gonna. I just got to dump that in there. You Your Trey Gang is gonna be so proud of you. I know Twitter's gonna blow up with this one. Oh, I'm not even following that one. I'll follow that one. Maybe it was a different one. It came up. <laughs> what were you? What's on your search engine? Yeah. No, it was on Twitter, and it came up. As, <laughs> it came up as people you should follow. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> no, but it was your. It was your pictures on there. What? And I made sure because I was like, well, I mean. I, I'll follow him, I guess. But it wasn't like anything raunchy. It was just like, you know, that how Dick is a name for some people. What? Really? Was it us? Yeah. Oh, we've got Because it was like it was like two days ago. Back, but somebody's had It was like two days it was like two days ago. Awesome. We're that big. I think Yes. It's like, who is it? Like when when you find out your kid is on a billboard in the Philippines, and you're like, wait a minute, that's wait, wait, that's kid. not, that's yeah. I was on a milk carton as a kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! So famous. Oh boy. <laughs> so famous. This Everyone has been was looking uh, for me. I mean, looking at me. This has been an absolute pleasure getting to talk to you guys, getting to know you all, that we're both, the three of us are. Um, this, this threesome was amazing. This threesome was really good. Uh, I had no idea we were on a similar wavelength in terms of ridiculousness, and I always appreciate that because I do 
I do believe it's a form of genius when you're able to laugh. <laughs> yeah. I honestly I do. I think it's a form of genius when you're able to find funny in things. Um, so I appreciate that very much. And I can't wait to read Along Comes a Wolf um, because it sounds like something that would be right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely read it. And I, I implore everyone else to, to get out there, um, go after those serial killers that are... <laughs> killing people with grocery bags and <laughs> and read this book is it how to Matt's pro bags. tip don't chase serial killer don't <laughs> chase serial plastic bags or tote bags yeah follow your dreams kids if your dreams are to chase serial killers <laughs> this book is going to teach you how to do it read it but don't do it that's what I'm saying read it but don't do it disclaimer gotcha yeah. yeah that one kid did it yeah but it didn't like, he did get stabbed, and I don't... He <laughs> yeah, he did now get he stabbed. Now he works at Future Shop or something. He's okay. I don't think Future Shop exists anymore. Or whatever, it's some electronic shop. Best Buy. I used to, I used to remember, I remember I uh, worked at a summer camp during college, or like summers of college, and I would come home to Atlanta, and I remember taking the nine-year-old kids out to the playground and stuff like that, and I'd be sitting, at, and they're like, you know, 30-plus kids and like two adults, me and... This girl watching. And I remember seeing these like sketchy dudes walking around and thinking like one of these dudes grabs one of these kids. You got to deal with. I'm gonna chase that mother trucker down. Like I, <laughs> I, was, I was getting. I felt like a like a um, like a, a sheep dog watching my watching my flock, man. Yeah. I was shepherd <laughs> and wolf. That's right. There you go. Hey. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for I've been doing this two months. <laughs> I've got I'm, it down. <laughs> I'm an award-winning uh, internet host guy. <laughs> Nailed it. That lamp was an award. <laughs> oh, that. Rocky's in it for you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was that was sent to me by YouTube. Was it? Nice. No. <laughs> I knew that. You weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> that was sent to you by YouTube. This was sent to me. That was the YouTube plan. The YouTube plan. You have three followers. Congratulations. <laughs> Here's a plan. You're growing your following. If it doesn't die, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> if it doesn't die in a year, we'll add extra followers to you. I wish they would do that, man. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. But it didn't right. for us. So well, we had like twelve followers. How long did you guys have a? How long did you guys have a channel for? Year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah, I've I been trying it. to figure out what what's like the. Well, we'll talk about this in a minute. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you guys for coming on. <laughs> we appreciate it. That was fun. That was a great Bye. time. Check out along comes a wolf. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?